Hello and welcome back everyone. Lidocaine local anesthetic is currently the most widely used and the most widely available local anesthetic in the market. Lidocaine was first synthesized in 1943 and in 1948 was made available as the first amide local anesthetic. It quickly replaced procaine as a drug of choice for pain control in dentistry. Lidocaine when compared with procaine possesses a very rapid onset of action, it produces more profound anesthesia, has a longer duration of action and has a greater potency. In addition to that, allergy to amide local anesthetic is virtually non-existing and extremely rare as compared to procaine which is an ester type local anesthetic. These features gave lidocaine a huge clinical advantage over procaine. Within a couple of years coming to the market, lidocaine quickly replaced procaine as the most widely used local anesthetic in medicine as well as in dentistry, which is still true in many countries. Currently, it represents a gold standard for local anesthetic, which means all new local anesthetic agents that are introduced in the market are compared to lidocaine. There are two types of lidocaine formulations available in the North American market. 2% lidocaine with 1 part by 50,000 parts of epinephrine and 2% lidocaine with 1 part by 100,000 parts of epinephrine. A version of 2% lidocaine with 1 by 300,000 parts of epinephrine is also available in some countries. While plain 2% lidocaine with no epinephrine is no longer available in dental cartridges supplied in North America. The reason for the omission of this plain lidocaine was the extreme vasodilating properties of lidocaine. Without epinephrine, lidocaine's duration and depth of anesthesia is severely limited to approximately 5 to 10 minutes of pulp anesthesia. This vasodilatory effect leads to higher blood levels of lidocaine, which in turn can lead to an increased chances of adverse reactions along with increased profusion of the area of the drug deposition. As of now, very few clinicians are known to use the 2 percent plain lidocaine in their dental practices. Inclusion of epinephrine in the local anesthetic or in this case lidocaine produces a decrease in blood perfusion leading to a decreased bleeding in the area and hence the drug is absorbed into the cardiovascular system much slowly, leading to an increase in depth and duration of local anesthesia. The solution with one part by 50,000 parts of epinephrine provides approximately 60 minutes of pulpal anesthesia and 3 to 5 hours of soft tissue anesthesia. The only recommended use of this solution however is for hemostasis purposes. It means the situations in which only small amounts of anesthesia are inserted into the surgical site. The same effect of increasing anesthetic duration, decrease in blood flow into the area and decreasing blood levels of anesthetic can also be observed with the formulation of one part by 100,000 parts of epinephrine. In fact, the duration and depth of pulp anesthesia attained with both formulation is almost equivalent. Hence, in terms of a typical patient, the formulation with one part by 100,000 parts of epinephrine is preferred over the other. As the concentration of epinephrine in that solution is almost half. Although the dose of one part by 50,000 is not too dangerous for majority of the patients, ASA 3 and ASA 4 patients with history of cardiovascular disease may prove to be overly sensitive to these concentrations. Same can be said for an adult patient as well. Hence, in these individuals, the more diluted form of lidocaine is recommended. For hemostasis purposes, such as when bleeding is definitely a problem or can prove to be a problem, then 2% lidocaine with 1 part by 50,000 parts of epinephrine is recommended. However, the minimum volume of this solution should be used. Although as mentioned in my previous videos, local anesthetic are generally very safe when used as recommended. However, as with any drug, they too can cause problems when used inappropriately. The first signs and symptoms of lidocaine overdose may include drowsiness, leading to a loss of consciousness and respiratory arrest. Muscle tremor and seizures are also commonly known to occur with increasing levels of lidocaine blood levels, along with other local anesthetic side effects, which involve CNS stimulation followed by CNS depression. I will talk more about local anesthetic overdose in my other videos because it is a very detailed topic requiring separate attention. Thank you for watching till the end. As always, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.